I am Bill Brewster. Today is the feast day of the Most Holy Trinity. At this time, if you have a cell phone, we ask that you please silence it or shut it off. If during a liturgy, children need to use the restroom, we ask that they be accompanied by an adult. We'd like to extend a warm welcome to those of you that are visitors. The celebrant for this Mass will be Father Vaughn. In this gathering, we have asked to remember Don Goyette and Kenny Steer. Only one collection is taken up during Mass. Please place both your offertory donation and your donation for capital improvement in this single collection. Please use second collection envelopes found at the entrances for any check or cash donations made to the second collection. Let us now take these final moments to prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in the Eucharist and pray together our parish mission prayer. Through your Son, Almighty Father, we have received the mission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. Help each and every one of us at St. Patrick's Parish to go, make, baptize, and teach so that each person that we meet will fall in love with you and seek your love in the sacraments. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Good afternoon. Let us now join into worship by praising God with our opening hymn, number 710, O God Almighty Father, number 710. Please stand. O God Almighty Father, Creator of Stand in wonder while earth your glory sings. O most holy Trinity, undivided unity, holy God, mighty God, good immortal, be adored. Jesus, Word incarnate, Redeemer most adored, all glory, praise, and honor be yours, O Sovereign Lord. O most holy Trinity, undivided unity, holy God, mighty God, God immortal be adored. O God, the Holy Spirit, who lives within our souls, send forth your light and lead us to our eternal goal. O most holy Trinity, undivided unity, holy God, mighty God, God immortal, be adored. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory 
to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Praise. 
from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. It is the first Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, actually, our bishop has just actually asked that in our bulletins we put uh, next to the feast day, or, you know, uh, Trinity Sunday, Corpus Christi, the uh, uh, whichever week in ordinary time, how far we out are from uh, out from Pentecost. We got that after we already sent the bulletin, and so you won't see it in this week's bulletin, but next week's bulletin, just a little little note to remind us that it is the coming of the Holy Spirit that transforms our lives, that makes the church alive. It is the soul of the church. And so we remember that this is what we're all about. We are a people of the Holy Spirit. And we look and with, as we celebrate Trinity Sunday, we recognize the central mystery of our faith. No other faith in the whole world believes God to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They might believe in three gods, or they might believe in one God, but they don't believe in one God who is three persons, so intimately united that they are only one God. 
You confused yet? And yet this is the central mystery of our faith. We can't grasp it. We can't grasp the Trinity with our mind, but we can grasp him by our love. Because he is love. St. John tells us in his first letter, God is love. God is not like love. God is not uh, loving, although he is, of course. But that is his very nature. Who he is is love. And love, by its very nature, must then be triune. The lover doesn't just love vaguely out there, but loves someone, the beloved. And that love that is there, that unites them, that is the third person. As that love is so real, he is a person. And so God then created us in his image and likeness. And so we see this, how two become one in in their love. And in that love, it is so real. Nine months later, you might just have to give it a name. Right? That the two become one and the one can become three. This is the mystery of the Trinity and how we reflect that mystery being made in God's image and likeness. Now, in the uh, first reading today, we hear from Exodus. Now, this is just about the time when, uh, you know, the people of Israel had uh, were worried and saying, where is Moses? He's up on the mountain. He's been there too long. And so they make these golden calves. And the Lord says, this is who I am. A merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. It's exciting. He's rich in kindness and fidelity. A lot of times we think of Old Testament God, he's the mean one. And New Testament God, oh, he's so kind and merciful. No, even from the time of Moses, he's revealing himself. That who he is, is merciful love. And then, of course, in the gospel, we hear this revelation is then uh, made flesh in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world. God didn't just tolerate the world. God didn't just put up with the world. And certainly God didn't hate the world, but God so loved the world, meaning you and me, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. This is the eternal love story of God with us. Who he is is love. And he made us to love us and for us to love him back. That's the whole reason we exist. The whole reason we exist is to love. Now, this world is meant to be a training in love. So that as we love, we become not just more acting like God, but we become more like God who is love. As we allow our love to then permeate, we then have to reach out. But love isn't just a... A feeling. Love isn't just like, oh, you make me feel good, or, you know, I feel so good when I help you out or do something for you. Love, love is a choice. I choose, I will, your good more than what I want. I choose to do you, you good more than I choose what I want. It's self-denial. We see this, of course, most beautifully in how God loves us, dying on the cross. But so that love then must look like how we die to ourselves for those around us. Some of the most loving people I know, some of the most affectionate people I know, are people with Down syndrome. You ever met anybody with Down syndrome? They're just beautiful. I'm thinking about a, 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 a guy who's been coming to our, um, our Monday night uh, movies. He's just such a beautiful young man. 
and how he shows such love. And he helps us to love as well. We look at places like Iceland, though. And they said they've cured Down syndrome. What do they mean by that? There's no cure for Down syndrome. It just means that they've killed all the babies with Down syndrome before they're born. So if they say they have, they've cured it, but really, they haven't. And if our whole purpose here in this world is to learn how to love, God has given us so many opportunities with the struggles, with the problems, with the brokenness of this world, to learn to go beyond ourselves to love. And someone like Dean can teach us how to love. And when we say, well, I don't want to have that that problem in my life, we're getting rid of God's opportunity for us to grow to become more like Him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? So God is saying to us, I want you to be like me. I want you to grow to be like me. And everything that happens in your life can be an opportunity for you to grow in love. Yes, the hardships of our lives can turn us hard. They can make us uh, 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 calloused of, of heart. But they also, if we choose, could stretch us beyond our own selfishness and self-centeredness to turn ourselves beyond ourselves so that we can learn to reach out in love to those around us in love to our God. May we reflect the image of the Trinity, lover, beloved, and that which unites them, love. May we grow in that mystery of how God made us in his image and likeness by reaching beyond ourselves, dying to ourselves, maybe in little ways, maybe in big ways, in order that we may have this training to grow in love and so one day be united so completely to God who is love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ is proof of God's infinite love for us. And so we bring our needs before the Lord, assured that there is nothing we can ask that exceeds what we have already been given. For the church, that we may always work to build unity within the church itself, with all who confess Jesus as Lord and ultimately among all God's children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
that all nations may reject war and violence as legitimate ways to resolve conflicts and may instead embrace working for peace and justice for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married couples who, and all who are engaged to be married, that their love may reflect the divine love upon, among Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those chosen to share the mercy of God as priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers will be faithful to the spirit of truth who has called them and guides them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, teachers, catechists, and all who teach of our loving and merciful God by word and example, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Florence Cardwell and all that have recently died recently, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Don Goyette and Kenny Steer, and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly and for all the prayers written in our book of Paris intercession, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Triune God, you so love the world that you gave your only Son. Listen to the needs on our lips and in our hearts, and grant them in your exquisite generosity. Through Christ our Lord. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out to you each day, with one voice they acclaim. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. This Friday we have a Mass of Healing and Hope. If you or, or someone you know is in need of healing in body, mind, soul, spirit, relationship, or any other way, we have that at 7 p.m. this Friday night here in the church. This Saturday is our Men of St. Joseph, and all men 18 and up are invited to, to join us. It's from 7 to 9 a.m. We'll start here in the parish, in the church, and then move over to the parish center, uh, first with the time of prayer, and then the time of food and fellowship and sharing. It's not too late to sign up for Vacation Bible School. It'll be held the week of July 10th through the 14th from 9 a.m. till noon. It's open to campers from 5 to 12. Come and play games, cra do crafts, and meet other campers. We wanted to make sure you understand you don't have the same uh, misunderstanding I did about Vacation Bible School. I thought it would be sitting around reading the Bible all week. Right, that sounds like so much fun. But actually, it's, it's a high-powered, high-energy camp. Kids uh, keep coming back year after year. They enjoy it so much. You can find registration forms on our website in the parish office and at the front entrance of the church. In terms of the New Hampshire Catholic Appeal, we wanted to thank all those who have participated in that. As of today, our parishioners have raised $22,575 toward our goal of $53,280. Uh, we still need to uh, collect or... Um, uh, uh, have people do pledges uh, up to $30,000, Actually, no, the $0.87 cents aren't there. But uh, So we thank you for your generosity. We ask that if you haven't yet made a gift to the New Hampshire Catholic Appeal, if you could considerably, con prayerfully consider that. Prayerfully consider that. We have envelopes at the main entrance of the church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing the song that sends us forth, number 197, Holy God, we praise thy name, number 197. See 